Hello, and welcome to today's video. Today, I'm going to talk to you all, everything you need to know about genetics, all, basically everything. I want to make this an all-encompassing video, but I'm also going to try and make it short and sweet and really give you just the things you actually need to do, need to know and the things you need to do. No fluff, make it, make it very easy for you. So today we're talking all things genetics. I'm going to walk you through, first of all, how to actually do this. How do you do a genetic test? Which one are you supposed to buy? What do you do with it once you've got that test? So obviously you do the test, then you need to use some interpretation software. I'm going to walk you through exactly how you do all of that. I'm going to walk you through how to get your genetic code, where to put it. And then I'm going to show you the reports. After that, I'm going to show you what the reports actually mean. So we're going to go through and we're going to look at some of these key, these are called SMPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms. We're going to go through, we're going to look at these and we're going to look at uh, dietary, supplemental, and lifestyle uh, changes and factors that will influence these genes so that you can change your genetic destiny. Let's let, let's say that. And I also want to tell you a little bit about why I'm doing this, why I'm making this video specifically, and how this information can actually practically help you. Because I know there's a lot of noise on the internet about you need to do this, you need to do that. This has been one of the most uh, life-changing tests because of the information that it gave me and the lifestyle supplemental changes I was able to implement played one of the most, I want to say the most instrumental factors in my recovery from chronic fatigue syndrome. And it has helped with a whole bunch of different problems, you know, liver, gallbladder issues. I've used this test or these kinds of testing and this kind of approach with hundreds of my clients as well. And it's very, very powerful, very reliable, very effective. And the best thing about genetic testing is you test once and you have this data forever. So whether you work with me or uh, like certain doctors, naturopaths, um, any anyone, this data is always relevant. Most like blood tests, um, test your cholesterol, testing your adrenal glands, testing your microbiome. These are only snapshots in time and they'll only be valid until, well, basically, the second after they're kind of not really valid because then they're just a snapshot your genes they never change so this is a test that's going to be useful for you forever and it's really cheap and it's really affordable and everybody should do this because it can provide you with so much information so just before i get into the video i just need to do a little microphone check just to make sure that the live is going very well you can hear me and everything's great perfect cool that's all good so why would you want to do this test? What like what practical um, what practical observable like let, let let's actually measure this as like improvable improvements in symptoms. Like how has this actually changed lives? How is this information going to impact you? So I can tell you personally, information that I got doing this and then the lifestyle changes that I implemented after significantly improved my chronic fatigue syndrome. I have a genetic mutation called NTHFR C677T. You don't need to know what that is. If you do already, then cool, that's good for you. But if you don't, I'm going to talk about that towards the end of the video. I'm going to explain what these things are and what you need to do about them. Uh, supplementing around this, and I have some several other mutations as well, but basically for, for me, using B12 and folate completely changed my life. It really improved many of my chronic health problems, uh, many of my symptoms, and it's put me in a really good place where I'm now on a daily basis working towards uh, a new and higher level of healing. And the reason that I specifically emphasize my case and chronic fatigue syndrome is it is basically the most severe chronic health problem that you can get. When you reach the point of chronic fatigue syndrome, your body is in full, like multi-systemic collapse. Adrenals are just destroyed. Your digestive system is destroyed. Like your body is just not working properly anymore. Many of the, many of the systems that are involved in functioning, they've all collapsed and they're all negatively influencing each other. You're in this very negative downward spiral. And if I can recover from that, and this information was really helpful for me for, for me doing this, then you can use this data for different things as well. I've used this for this is really helpful if you have any kind of liver or gallbladder problems. If you've got gallstones or if you've got liver pain or if you've had any kind of to toxicity that your liver is trying to remove. So any kind of fat soluble toxicity, if you've got mold exposure, exposure to like mercury or heavy metals, um, pesticides or agriculture, like a huge part of this is methylation and to some extent also sulfation and these are really important detoxification processes and if you've been exposed to this kind of toxicity understanding this is a, is one of the key pieces you know people say you need to open your detox pathways or open your your drainage pathways this is the, the, one of the keys to do that this is why it is so important so for me improvements in chronic fatigue syndrome i've had clients with 
MS that have had improvements in neuropathy. I have had clients also with with fatigue, chronic fatigue, adrenal fatigue, significant improvements. Clients with um, digestive issues, particularly liver and gallbladder, really, really connected. Significant improvements, not just one, several. So this can really have a, you know, you make your liver happy. All of your other, everything else in your body is improved as well because your liver is connected to everything. So this is... This is practically why you should pay attention to what I want to teach you. And this is why it's worth spending the money on doing this test. And I think that's enough. Hopefully that's enough of a trying to dangle a carrot in front of you to make you like want to absorb this information because it, it methylation can be a lot to understand, but it's so worth it. And I'm going to break it down to you. So it's going to be so easy. Honestly, like if you've watched my other videos before, you know, I can break these things down for you so you can understand them. And I'm going to do that for you. And this is really worth knowing. So. I'm actually going to be sharing my screen with you and I'm going to be walking you through this literally step by step. So there's no way that you can get this wrong. I'm going to make this, let's call it like foolproof. Like there's no way you can, you can get this wrong. So I'm just going to stick my screen on screen share. And I have to just turn this off because it always opens a little tab every time I do this, every time I go live. So let me just do that and do this. And here we go. So don't look at this page just yet. This is where we're going. So this is where we're going to start. So what providers do I recommend for doing this testing? I recommend two providers, but currently I only recommend one. So I would recommend Ancestry DNA. So this is, you can just go on Google and you can type ancestry.com. If you're in the States, it will take you to the States website. If you're not, it will redirect you. I went to ancestry.com and I'm currently in Germany. So it was like, no, you have to go on the DE site. And it pulled me over here. This is the one you need, this one here on the left, the cheap one. You don't need to, a lot of these, and also you will see, so one of the other ones that I recommend is, is 23andMe. However, recently, some of my clients have had problems with getting their raw data um, from, from, from this company. They're, I don't, I'm not exactly sure of the exact reason, but I went with 23andMe. If you're going to go with 23 and me, you just need this one. You just need the basic. You know, they're like, oh, look, spend twice as much money and get the essential and we'll get the enhanced. You don't need it. It's crap. And it's really, they're really tricky about this as well because they put health over here and you think, oh, but I want to know about my health. The, what they tell you about health is not helpful. They don't tell you uh, anything useful about your health with this, with this additional bundle. Don't get the essential. Don't get the, get the basic. And if you're going to go with uh, ancestry, you don't need to get, plus predispositions it's more just get the basic one whichever which there are other softwares that you can use as well and i will get more more into that in a moment actually i can show you it just I believe it's here there are other things you can use as well so you can see like you've got ancestry dna 23 and me but you can also use there's a bunch of these here look living dna home dna genes for good we we gene 23 Mofang, like there's a bunch of different things you can use with this software that we're going to be using today. But if you live in the West, if you live in Europe, if you live in America, 23andMe and Ancestry are generally the fastest, the easiest, and this is one I did as well. And I'm trying to keep this cheap. I'm trying to keep this easy. I just want, it's like, I just want you to have the data so you can improve your health. So I actually personally right now would recommend you go with Ancestry instead of 23andMe. Because some, as I said, some of my clients have had problems with getting the raw data. It's been very delayed. So to just avoid that, use use Ancestry. But if the if for some reason 23andMe stops doing that and it's and it's working better, or if you just happen to have this data sitting around, you've done this already. Cool. So this is the one that you want. This basic one over here, or if it's on Ancestry, it's the cheap one. You don't have to buy the expensive one. There's basically no benefit. What you're going to do then is you're going to come over to this website here. This website is geneticgenie.org. This is a free website. You can donate if you can and you can afford to, then you should donate because this is a really cool website. They provide you with some, some very good value. And as far as I can tell, they're very safe. They don't keep your data. They're not gonna, they're, they're very secure. I, I like them. They're, they have very ethical uh, kind of approach or application. So you want to come onto this website and you're gonna go up here to this genomics panels and you're gonna click methylation panel or detox panel. You actually want to do both of these. And I'm going to show you the I'm going to show you both of these afterwards. And then what you will do is, oh, let me just close that. You don't need to see that. So in here, it says choose file. You will basically just browse here and you will upload your your raw data file. I'm going to show you where to where to find that. Yes, at least if you're using 
uh, 23 and me. I can't show you on Ancestry because I don't have an Ancestry account because I didn't do it there. But it's it's very simple. So if you come over here to 23 and me, so what you'll do is you you'll buy the thing like in the first two tabs that I showed you, you buy it from 23 and me, you buy it from Ancestry. They send you out a kit. It's basically just a little bottle that you just you basically just spit into it a couple of times. You just spit your saliva into it until you fill it up to the line and then you send it back and then they will send you an email and then all of the data will be available for you online. Then you want to log into your portal. So I'm on I'm on 23 and me right now. Um, and then you just want to come up here to this to this little options thing over here and you go into resources. And from here, there's a browse raw genotyping data. You just click browse and you can just download it here. And you can't actually download it directly from the website. But what you can do is when you click download, you tick this little box and you submit the request. And what will happen is they will send you an email with your raw data. So you don't download it from the website, but you just you do this and then they'll send it over to you. And you'll get the raw data file just as a little, a little file. And then all you want to do is come to Genetic Genie and go to the methylation and detox panels, upload the file. You can change this donation to zero if you want. You can put it on custom and change it to zero. If you can donate, then 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 do great. If you if you can't or you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, and it will provide you with these two reports, and these are the reports. So it will provide you with the detox profile. This is actually mine, so I don't. You can see all of my all of my genetic like messiness. I don't I don't mind sh sharing that with you if it if it's hopefully going to help. As we come on, so you'll see on this one, it's pretty good. Come on to this one, you're like, oh, that's a lot of reds and yellows. Yeah, yeah. So my my genes aren't aren't fantastic, but but yeah, so you'll get these reports. If if you're doing a consult with me, sending these reports to to me is actually what I'm looking for. If you're if you're having a consultation with uh, somebody else, they might want the raw data because they might have their own software that they use. Like Genetic Genie is just a free one. There are some other softwares that cost well, let's say a considerable amount of money that can read this and they can show you lots of other things. I'm just trying to keep it basic. I'm just trying to keep it simple. And I'm just trying to give you something to start with. But if you're doing a consult with somebody, you can always send it. This is always going to be relevant. So say 10 years from now, you get you go to India and you get malaria and it messes your gut up. And you're like, oh, I don't know what's going on. And then you do a gut test and blah, blah, blah. You can also attach this, even if it's 10 years old, it's still relevant. It's still really helpful for the practitioner. So... This is the detox profile. This this looks at your detox, some of your detoxification genes, and this is your methylation profile. This looks this looks at your methylation genes. So, I'm hopefully you now kind of get how to do this and how to get the report. And now you're looking at the report and you're thinking, well, what the hell is that? How the, how the hell am I supposed to do anything with this? Like, I can remember the first time I got my genetic report, and I looked at this and I was like, oh my god! And I just closed it and left it. And I was like, okay, we'll try and figure that out later. So this is something that you will learn over time. This is something that you will, it's like you dip your toe in and you will learn a little bit more about it as time goes on. One thing I do really like about, about specifically Genetic Genie is you can come down, you can scroll down and it tells you a little bit about these uh, different mutations, what it, what they are, what it means. And I, I do believe they also talk a little bit about things that this can be connected to. So and also some connections between these mutations. It's really important, especially on this methylation profile. You understand everything here is connected. So it, this this is one reason talking about genetics in a general sense, like in the concept of a video is kind of hard because I'm going to walk you through my genetic profile and the changes that I implemented and how they helped me and why they were able to help me based on what my genetics say. But you could have almost identical ones to me, but with two extra mutations. And you could try and do the same stuff that I did and it would make you feel terrible because these things are all connected. So working with someone can be really helpful when you're looking at these things. But scrolling down here, it gives you a little bit of information about these things. And I find this really nice. It's, uh, it's really, really helpful. So I will now go on to, the, to this other one, this detox profile, and I'll walk you through this. So first of all, these, these CYP uh, mutations up here, these are kind of like your first, your... I think you you can you would consider them like stage stage one liver detox processes. So these are these are really connected to that stage one liver detoxification. I've got three heterozygous mutations, which is I would say generally it's like pretty good. 
you know? Um, but I often don't see many people having as many problems here. It's more in stage two liver detoxification that people are having problems. You know, this is more the people that have got like multiple chemical sensitivity or like the bile issues, the liver bile issues, um, very heavily, uh, people that have been exposed to heavy levels of toxicity and then have kind of developed this immune dysfunction. It's normally more in the, the stage two uh, liver detoxification process. Um, but the other one that's worth noting here is this uh, SOD2 here. So SOD2, this, uh, this is an acronym. This stands for superoxide dismutase. And SOD2 specifically is the superoxide dismutase that's present in your mitochondria, in the lining of your mitochondria. And what this means, so if you have a mutation here, this, maybe I should also explain this. If you have this yellow color and you have a plus and a minus, this is heterozygous, which means you have one mutation. If you have a plus plus and it's red, it means it's homozygous. And this means it's a double mutation. This means that it's, so put, putting it in the context of the MTHFR mutation here, I, I, I'm using this one because I know the numbers. If you have a, a heterozygous mutation like I do, this reduces the the efficacy of your ability basically to, to methylate, to, to recycle uh, folate by about 30%. If you have a homozygous, this will change from, 30% to 70%. So it, it significantly reduces the function. You do have to do a little bit of research though. Like for example, down here in CBS, you would see, oh, I have a double mutation. You might think, oh, that means that your CBS is going to be really slow. It's going to be really, really bad. The thing is CBS, when you have mutations, it actually turns into an upregulation instead of a downregulation, which means that the pathway goes faster instead of slower when it's, when it's mutated. So you do have to do a little bit of research about that and see which way it goes. Generally, it is slower, but there are exceptions. So anyway, this SOD2, superoxide dismutase, the function of this, this is a, this is a, it's basically like a detoxification enzyme. Your body uses it in protecting itself from, from reactive oxygen species, from infl basically from inflammation or from inflammatory molecules. And where this, this um, superoxide dismutase is specifically is in your mitochondria. So what this means is, if you have a mutation here, you are more likely, and again, this is genes. Genes aren't setting your, like your destiny, but they're just kind of predisposing your genetic outcome. What this means is, if you have mutations in SOD2, you are more likely to develop a, a cellular uh, energy problem. Your mitochondria are not as resilient. They're not able to handle reactive oxygen species as well as a normal person. So this would mean that you are more likely to develop something like chronic fatigue syndrome or like an energy deficit on a cellular level because your mitochondria cannot handle toxicity uh, 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 to, to the same extent that a normal person can. Now, you don't even have to have this mutation. You know, if you have enough toxicity, you will still develop chronic fatigue syndrome as an example. But what this means is it, your your capacity to handle toxicity inside the cell is less than a normal person. And if this is going to happen to you, it's probably going to happen sooner. You're probably more likely to get that onset, whereas somebody else would have to go even become even more toxic before they before they reach this point. So what this basically what you need to know here is if you have this one is you need to protect your mitochondria more. You need to prioritize antioxidants. You need to try to you need to understand that your mitochondria are a little bit more fragile. They're a little bit more delicate and you need to just make sure that they're protected so that toxins are removed from the system before they actually reach the, reach the mitochondria. So making sure your antioxidant status is good is very, very important if you have this, if you have this mutation. As I said, with, with, with learning about these things, this is like learn a little bit and then stop and then learn a little bit more. I'm looking here now and I'm looking at these NAT2 and seeing that I have heter uh, homozygous mutations in both of these. I actually don't know what this does, but this is making me think, well, yeah, I know most of these other things. I'm going to research this now. This is the next thing I'm going to look at. So even if you come away from this video and you only learn one thing or you're only able to absorb one thing, you have to look at this as a, the marathon of healing, not the sprint. So just take that little nugget away and and learn and implement it. But the next the, the next one is where the really interesting stuff happens. But I actually uh, I'm just I'm being honest. Like I'm looking at these. I don't actually know what nat nat one nat two do. So I will I'll do some research after this video. It's kind of got me interested. So I'm going to figure out what that does. Maybe I'll make another video very soon. Nat two. Here's what you need to know. Who knows? 
anyway, so onto methylation. This is this is where more of my focus has been because this has impacted my life significantly. And this is where I will say like I've attributed most of my improvements to, to understanding this, this page here. So I will start with the way I'm going to go through this is I'm going to talk about things. Let's I'm going to kind of do it chronologically, but this is also in order of things that had the most impact in my life personally. So this is kind of the order that I would prioritize these. So we're going to start in MTHFR. So MTHFR C677. And remember, you can you can go down here and you can read about this, you know? So you can see one function of MTHFR, and it even tells you what it is. Methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase is to help convert homocysteine to methionine. It's like, oh, that's really cool. And then if you if you if you really want to, you can open up a so I, I could do this. You can open up another tab and you could type methylation cycle. And you'll take one look at that and you'll be like, not today. I don't want to see that because it's very confusing. It's very like, whoa, there's a lot of stuff there. But as you dip your toe in more and more, you will start to look at these things. But you'll see this is connected to high levels of homocysteine. According to Ben Lynch, and you can see it's connected to autism, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, miscarriages, IBS. And you might be reading this list and thinking, tick, 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 tick. And you're like, okay, if you've got this gene and you're experiencing these symptoms, there's a really good likelihood that by addressing this genetic dysfunction, you can see improvements in these things. Although I don't have an, a, di a diagnosis of autism, I experienced many autistic or let's say like Asperger's-like behaviors especially when I'm in a state where my methylation isn't working correctly. This is, I would say it is 95% reduced when I'm taking care of my methylation situation correctly. And then when I'm not, I literally feel like full-blown autistic. It's crazy. And also my chronic fatigue syndrome will come back like crazy. And this is the thing. Your methylation status will change in literally a couple of hours based on your nutritional status of your body. So supplements change things like immediately. I know if like I've got my... For example, I've got my folate right here. This is my methylfolate. I take this every single day. If I miss one day, the day after, I'm thinking, what the hell did I do wrong yesterday? I something Something's messed me up. I feel this. The, I know this will change over time. You know, I've been maybe in a, methyl, in a, meth, a methylation deficit for maybe 10 years of my life. And I've only had the correct methylation status for maybe the last two or three. And it takes it's going to take time to, to recover this. Also, it's kind of side tangent, but very interesting fact. A lot of this, this meth, this um, these methylation donors, so methylfolate, are actually produced by our gut flora. And if you have an imbalanced gut flora, it messes all of this this stuff up. This is one reason why you don't really care about your genetics until everything starts to go wrong. And usually, you've had a mold exposure, or you've had antibiotics, or you've had something that's wiped your microbiome out, and that's when your genetics really come into play because now you actually can't produce enough folate by yourself. And then these genes start to kind of show and you start to develop autism, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, may have miscarriages, IBS, birth defects, multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's, bipolar. You know, think that's such a long list. There's so many that haven't even been included in that. And this is just one gene. You know, there's a lot. So this was the first one that I addressed. Initially, uh, when, I, when, I, when I learned about MTHFR, I was... I was extremely intolerant to all supplements, methylation supplements and and not. I couldn't I couldn't do anything. Like for example, the one that I take now has got uh cellulose fiber in it. I absolutely would not be able to tolerate that. Even the most clean supplement couldn't couldn't tolerate. Um so the way that I went about this was I was doing juicing. I was juicing about a liter of kale juice every single day. And I'm not saying necessarily you should do this, you know, I'm just telling you about my experience, but this was the only way I could get enough folate into my body to meet my nutritional needs. And God, I can tell you drinking a liter of kale juice every day was not fun. I did not enjoy the taste. It was not great. But do you know what was great? Not having chronic fatigue syndrome. That was really, really great. So yeah, it really sucked. And that's the way that I had to deal with it at the time. But that's what worked. Now I don't even have to juice. I can just take a little pill. It's amazing. It's really cool. So this this one had a huge impact on, on me. And one reason I'll say this is, is if even if you don't have this mutation, almost every mutation on this page that you can see right here, almost all of these are involved in methylation processes. Any basically, almost always, where you see the, if you see somewhere you've got MT, usually this means, this is like methylation. Usually, not always, general rule of thumb, but a lot of the time, if you've got MT, like you've got MT here, you've got MT here, you, most of these is, because MT is generally sort of like methyl transferase a lot of the time. So 
methyl transferase. You can think methyl transfer enzyme. So transfer A's is an enzyme that transfers. A's means enzyme, transfer A's. So it's an, a transfer enzyme and methyl. So it's using a methyl donor. And if you don't methylate well, then providing methyl donors is helpful. So this was the first one that the first change that I ever implemented. And now I sit at 1000 milligrams. I think it's a thousand milligrams. Let me just check. No, it's a thousand micrograms. So that's very, 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 very small. Um, the only way you'll know where your dose is, is you have to play with it and you have to see how it makes you feel. And a lot of these things impact other things. For example, at some point down my journey, I started to do B12 injections, which is very much connected with uh these these set of mutations here the mtr and the mtrr and again you can scroll down on here and you can see you can read uh whereabouts is it oh did they room i'm pretty sure they used to have a thing oh it's here okay sorry i missed it so this is about mtrr and mtr so this one is methionine synthase reductase and this one is 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate homocysteine methyl transferase. So again, you're hearing methyl transferase. So it's involved in methylation. You can hear this one helps to recycle B12. And this one, methionine synthase requires B12, specifically in the form of methyl cobalamin. This is the common theme. This is all about methyl. It's all about methyl donors. So if you have mutations in either of these MTHFR C677T or MTHFR A1. A129, oh my God, A, I'm, I'm readjusting to some new glasses. So everything's still a little bit wobbly. MTHFR A1298C, then likely folate need. And if you have the MTR or, the, or any of the MTRR mutations, likely a B12 need. Or let's say it might help. It, it's it, Generally, it's worth supplementing. And the form is important as well. It has to be methylated. Something that's worth saying is if you've taken B12 supplements in the, in the past, and you have several of these MTR or MTRR mutations, your body cannot attach a methyl donor to the B12 to actually use it. So you could have, this is especially true of cyanocobalamin. If you've taken a lot of cyanocobalamin in the past, you cannot trust your blood tests because they're going to measure high levels of this, of this vitamin that your body cannot actually use because it cannot attach this methyl donor to it. But this is also true to some extent if you've used hydroxy or a, or a denazole cobalamin before, especially if you have many of these, because your body cannot attach that methyl donor to actually use it. So these, basically these uh, six mutations here, these are all about folate, methylfolate and B12, methylated B12. The, the This is the core of this page. These are the most important. But there are some other things that are worth mentioning. So Let's go down to here. Let's look at BHMT. So BHMT is a very interesting mutation where I believe this is beta homocysteine methyl transferase. Let me see if I'm right on that one. Beta homocysteine methyl transferase. Nice. Perfectly. So this acts as a shortcut through the methylation cycle, helping convert homocysteine to methionine. This, this when you, if you, if you have a problem here, this is one of the, the, I find this, addressing this mutation can be really nice if you have the gallbladder problems, you know, the gallbladder sludge or the the poor uh, bile flow. And especially if you're very sensitive to other methyl donors, like if you take folate and you have a really big reaction, you know, and the reactions can be, think about what is connected to this mutation, this MTHFR mutation. So you've got the autism. So you would basically, if you're having a methylation imbalance, you would expect let's say like a flare up or an exacerbation or kind of symptoms that kind of fit near what this is connected to. So again, this is this list. So you could see flare ups of autistic symptoms. You could see flare ups of, of fatigue. Um, also, so for example, we haven't really touched on this one yet, but COMT. So this is also a methyl transferase. So when you're messing around with your methylation, this one is really connected with neurotransmitters and catecholamines. So I have I have a heterozygous in two of these up here as well. When I take a methyl donor and it throws me out of balance, it messes up all of my catecholamines. You know, it throws all of my neurotransmitters out of balance, my histamine, my dopamine. And like, I'm like, I feel like autistic and I'm overwhelmed. And I've got like ADD and ADHD and a hyper focus on like, for example, for me, it's like a video game fixation. It's like, I'm like, dialed into a video game and i cannot 
focus on anything else and I just have a complete attention deficit for anything else. Like sitting here and trying to record a video that, like the way that I'm doing now, I would be completely incoherent. I would be uh, completely incapable of doing it because it would completely mess with everything. So I find generally people that pro have problems with starting with either a B12 methyl donor or a folate methyl donor, if they have this BHMT mutation, supplementing with uh, a methyl donor in this area can be very well tolerated and usually works really nicely. And it's like a double bonus if you also have liver or bile problems or gallbladder problems. So the way that you would support this is you would use either my preferred option, which is sunflower lecithin. And this is because it contains choline, but you could also take betaine. So this would even be betaine HCL would, would provide this. Betaine is a methyl donor. Choline is a methyl donor. These will provide methyl donors into your system. When your methylation has been sluggish for a long time, the way I think about all of this, all of these genes is they're kind of like cogs in a machine. So imagine, imagine like a bunch of different cogs. You can imagine like on a, on a bike, you know, you've got, you've got the gears. These are like cogs. Imagine you've got these, these are all connected. So it's not just like one chain, like on a bike connecting here, you've got one chain that connects this one. And then where these two turn, there's a chain that comes up here and a chain that comes over here and connects to different cogs and you have cogs all over the place and they're all connected. And if you speed up one of the, the, one of the turnings of the cogs, it has an impact on every other cog that's in this system. That's just how it works. So when your methylation has been depressed for a while and it hasn't been working properly, sometimes you try to speed up in a certain area and it just, it, it does, it just doesn't work. Like your body cannot handle that change and it, it's just like, and it just explodes, you know, it just shuts down and you have horrible symptoms. I find if you have the BHMT mutation, taking a sunflower lecithin, a choline or a betaine, I actually have an experiment with betaine for this. I've only used sunflower lecithin and choline, but looking at the charts, betaine should plug in in the same place. And it should actually potentially even be more effective, especially if you have stomach acid problems. It should fit in very, very nicely that. This can, this can start to get this whole cycle flowing again. The added benefit that I really like of using it in like choline or sunflower lecithin is this really helps with moving bile sludge. If you've seen my other videos about detoxification and opening your detox pathways, you'll know that so what we're doing today, looking at your genetics, looking at methylation, this is all in your liver. Most of this is happening inside of your liver. There are downstream processes that need to be done before you can upregulate this stuff that's happening in your liver. Otherwise, you will just you will just have problems. So you need to be pooping once a day. You need to be working on addressing your microflora imbalances, and you need to make sure that your bile is flowing. And the, so the choline can really help with this. So you need to be doing these other things. If you if, if this is all new to you and you, you haven't heard of my six steps to detox mold or how, how on earth do you open your detox pathways, go and check those videos out on YouTube. They're going to be really, really helpful. They're going to give you more success when you do when you come around to doing this if you're doing those other things first because you have to work on detox as a, as a bottoms-up approach. I love calling it a bottoms-up approach because one of my favorite things to help with this is coffee enemas and that's just hilarious because you literally have your ass up in the air. <laughs> so... I really, you really have to work from the bottom up. Otherwise you will cause uh, your symptoms to, to come crashing out and you will feel really bad doing it. So this can be really nice. If you have, as I said, uh, I'm just going to touch on the rest of these briefly. If you have the CBS mutation, this one is a, it's a, this one is connected to sulfation and your body's uh, transsulfuration pathways. So if you have sulfur problems, there's a really good likelihood that you're going to have a mutation here. I actually found that getting... So, sulfur intolerance is a very complex problem but i find over and over again what's often happening is actually a sulfur deficiency where even if you eat the sulfur and you have a reaction the body is actually craving for sulfur and it needs sulfur is really important it, you use it as a building block you use it to make glutathione sulfate itself is a very powerful antioxidant all of the things all like taurine and uh, n-acetylcysteine like these are all very important um, molecules in detoxification and usually people become intolerant because they're trying to the body's trying to do some detoxification process and all of these these gears are all they're all like messed up and they're not spinning correctly they're not working properly so getting your sulfur status correct is really really important in with cbs i toler i found that i had a real intolerance for epsom salt baths when i first started they'd make me very itchy they would make me very tired they'd make me really cranky and really irritable 
but I pushed through with that and maybe with the with the with what I know now I wouldn't have pushed through so aggressively but I really attribute a, a huge recovery to to Epsom salts it was really really helpful and potentially connected with this I will be saying that potentially and it might quite a lot because the thing is genetics they're they're very complex so it's hard to say like do this and it will definitely help it's very very hard to say um one of us so two two more things just before i finish up today up here you've got these vdr so these are your vitamin d receptor mutations usually almost every single person has at least one mutation on one either uh, a heterozygous on one or a homozygous on one i actually have a homozygous on one and a heterozygous on the other which i did not know i thought i just had a homozygous on one and the other one was green basically it, what what this means is you need to just keep your keep an eye on your vitamin d status it's more important for your vitamin d status if you have if you have one that is if you have at least one that is green, you don't have to worry. I mean, obviously your vitamin D status is important, but if you have one that is, if you have two that are red or one that is red and one that is yellow, it's more important that your vitamin D status is good. So generally what this means is you want to make sure that your vitamin D is on the upper levels of high. You want to just make sure your body really is saturated with it. And finally, Con T. So I have two heterozygous mutations here. This one can be really connected with your... So let me just scroll down here so you can see. So catechol O-methyltransferase. So again, here you go, methyltransferase. You can see there's a big theme to, to this video and to this kind of topic. So this will help you break down certain neurotransmitters and catecholamines. These include, so think about this. This is dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. Have you ever heard of nervous system dysregulation? Have you ever heard of addiction? You know, they are directly connected to these things dopamine like for me video games or this can be um youtube shorts getting stuck scrolling on on instagram reels or just getting stuck on social media in general there are a lot of dopaminergic activities that you can get kind of addicted to this can be because of this also this epinephrine and norepinephrine this can be connected with nervous system imbalances you know if your body struggles to de-escalate after stress a lot of the, so we, what usually ends up happening is you cannot de-escalate from stress you can't calm down so you go and distract yourself with some kind of addictive dopaminergic behavior because you're struggling with this chemical overwhelm in your brain and you also struggle with the dopamine thing so you usually like shut down emotionally and then go and distract yourself with some kind of dopaminergic activity this can also be like this can be drugs this can be like cocaine this can be uh, this can be heroin, this can be alcohol, this can be food, this can be a lot of different things. The reason that I use the examples of video games and social media is there's actually no substance even entering the body. It's purely happening in the brain. It's purely a dopaminergic thing. So if you have this mutation, sorting your methylation status out with like the folate, with the, the choline or the, the lecithin, the B12, the other kind of methyl donor supplements is really important because methylation is involved in this process. But this one is actually more of a lifestyle change. With this one, you want to just be mindful of, of of having this tendency, you know. I've really struggled with video game addiction, with getting stuck on social media, with with doing things. And I just distract myself from my feelings of overwhelm. And then my body has all of these stress hormones like running around inside of it. And I'm just like, oh, I don't feel safe. I can't relax. I can't let go. And that's not a good state for healing. So you need to take a pause, you know. I just sat on the floor behind me and just meditated for 10 minutes. And I was like, oh, I can actually feel calm. I can actually relax. But for if you have a com team mutation this is probably not just going to happen by default especially in the modern world where you have technology all around you and there's so many dopaminergic things you're going to actually have to consciously i say like okay genetically i'm a bit like my body's a kind of a bit shit here i have to implement a lifestyle change here which is i need to pause i need to pace myself i love to just lay on my bed and use my massage gun or like do some acupuncture on myself or just do some things to help you slow down it gives your body space to process and break down some of these some of these things that need to be broken down. So this is more lifestyle. You need to really change your lifestyle if you have this, especially if, if this is manifesting in ADD, ADHD, uh, anxiety. This, this affects anxiety. This really affects your mood. So anxiety, depression, uh, depersonalization is really connected with these things as well. So, so I hope that is really helpful for you. I think I just covered every one. Let me just check. Yeah, so I hope this was really helpful for you. Let me just pop me back big again so you can see my my lovely my lovely face. Cool. So I hope this was really helpful for you. Um, if you have any questions about this, please let me know. If you want to chat more about this, 
like either leave me a comment, you know, leave, leave me a couple of questions. As I said, genetics is kind of tricky to talk about in the general sense. So if you want to book a consult or you want to chat with me further on this, shoot me an email. You can find me on support at williamdickinson.co.uk or you can go and check out my website, williamdickinson.co.uk and your genetics are not your destiny. You can do a lot about it. I've found huge improvements by working on some of these things. It can absolutely change your life. So give it your best shot. I will tell you, even if you work with the best methylation expert, the best geneticist in the whole world, there's still a, an, an unfathomable, unfathomable amount of trial and error. So you may as well start the trial and error process now and just start playing with things and see what works. So if you do need a little bit of extra help, let me know. I'd be happy to. Um, leave me any questions. If you found this really helpful and interesting, let me know. I'd be really interested to hear how you've processed and digested this because this is a pretty overwhelming topic. So if you've actually managed to get to this point in the video and leave with a couple of takeaways or a couple of ideas or things you want to try, please tell me what they are. I'd be really interested to hear that. It would make me feel really good knowing that I just, I just took 30 to 40 minutes out of my day to cover a very in-depth and difficult topic and it actually was of some benefit to you. So please let me know. I hope you find it really helpful and interesting and take care. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.